You knew we were going to get around to this one sooner or later. Okay, everybody, today we're going all the way back to look at a motion picture that really launched a juggernaut of an industry with really starting out with nothing. We're talking about 1968's Night of the Living Dead. Whew, got a lot to do here. Anyway, before we go any further, before we dig into this gem anymore, once and again, and as always, to the trailer. Welcome to a night of total terror. Night of the living dead, the dead who live on living flesh, the dead whose haunted souls hunt the living, the living whose bodies are the only food for these ungodly creatures. <laughs> adventure in fear, an experience in shock, more shattering than your strangest nightmare, <coughs> night of the living dead, a night with the dead who cannot die, a night of total terror. of the living dead. All right, this motion picture was directed by George Romero. I covered him before. We're going to cover him again. Let's go. Of course, after this motion picture, he did a whole bunch of the dead flicks. We're talking he did Diary of the Dead. He did Dawn of the Dead. He did Land of the Dead. He did Survival of the Dead. But he did all this stuff, you know what I mean? We're talking The Crazies, The Dark Half, Monkey Shines, Season of the Witch. No, not the Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, different Season of the Witch. Of course, I already talked about him when I covered Creepshow. So, George Romero will always have a place in all of our hearts. Did some stuff we all love. Let's move on. Okay, everybody, before we get into the cast of this, Nobody in this thing really went on to a big motion picture career, and there's only really like a couple actors. Basically, everybody in this is just people that were involved in the production of the motion picture from a producing standpoint, from a writing standpoint, whatever it is. They all just jumped in and made a motion picture. So, don't look for any big cast here. It's not the way it's going to go. Playing Ben, Dwayne Jones. God, did an awesome job in this. Let's go. He was in stuff like Vampires and Beat Street and to die for, and Ganya and Hess. But really, he did a lot of work in the theater as an as a acting teacher, as a director, and he even did some literature teaching. So, very, you know, in with the theater, in with colleges, intelligent guy, not much of an acting career after this, is what it was. Kicked it out the park here, though. Playing Harry Cooper, Carl Hardman. He was actually the producer of this movie. How about that? And he popped up with, you know, Marilyn Eastman, who played his wife, which we'll get to in a second, and other productions, radio stuff, all this other kind of jazz is what it is. But he was in Santa Claus and stuff, but really no big acting career or anything like that. These, these, I told you, this, you're going to see that a lot. Playing Barbara, Judith O'Day. Weird, she did a few things way back in the day, then did act for like 20-some-odd, 30 years, whatever, and then it started popping up again. Whatever, but she was in things like Kill Giggles, and Hole in the Wall, and Claustrophobia, and Woman's Studies, and Abandoned Dead, and October Moon, and she did some stuff where you know, she owned a, a communications company or something, but that's where she lies. This is her fame. This is what we're all going to know her for. Let's just move on. Playing Helen Cooper, Marilyn Eastman. 
Now, she was in stuff like, you know, Santa Claus and Pop Up Down, Perry Mason. And in this thing, she ran around doing a lot of stuff in the props department. And she did some stuff with the makeup department. And she had her hands full. You're going to see that a lot in this motion picture, folks. Everybody that was in it was doing other things. It was a community thing. But we'll get into all that later. Play Tom. Keith Wayne. Again, movie career, basically non-existent. But he was working around as a singer. Uh, I think George liked to call him a go-go dancer, whatever you want to call it. But he was in this, later went on to become a chiropractor, movie career. Yeah, yeah, well, there you go. Okay, everybody playing Judy, Judith Riley. Now, really no career to speak of whatsoever. She was a receptionist for Hardman and Eastman, and then she went on to work for George Romero as a receptionist. And she just got the role because she was a receptionist there. Told you it was one of those flicks. And playing Karen Cooper, Kyron Shaw. Now... Let's face it, folks, no acting career, really. She did a couple little things, I think something called the Greenman or something like that. But she wanted to be a school teacher and making jewelry and things of that nature. And she was Carl Hardman's daughter. So that's kind of how she wound up in the motion picture. Okay, everybody, we're going to do this in 90 seconds or less so we can keep it fast, keep it entertaining, keep it moving so we can get to the summary where we'll all have our most fun. And let's face reality, for the love of God, you all know the story or basically a variation of the theme of, so we're going to keep this short. You got Johnny, you got Barbara. They're going to visit their father's grave. It's a few hours from where they live, but mom likes them to go out there and put some flowers down and do the normal. When they get there, Johnny starts making fun of Barbara because she's still afraid of cemeteries. And then he sees a guy walking through a cemetery who she should probably be afraid of. He starts teasing her with that classic line, They're coming to get you, Barbara. All this other kind of stuff. Well, lo and behold, son of a bitch comes to get Barbara. Johnny jumps in. He fights this ghoulish, devilish, space out fucking whatever you want to call him. And he falls down, bangs his head, and that's about the end of him. So she keeps running. She gets the hell out of Dodge until she finds a farmhouse to hide in. When she goes in, she finds there's a dead body there. That's not too cool. And a few moments later, when she's just about to run out the door from there being some other dead bodies roaming around the building, she runs into Ben, one Dwayne Jones, who comes inside, fortifies the house, and makes it a safe sanctuary from the walking dead. A few minutes later, they find out that the Coopers are in the basement, along with a young couple and their daughter, and lo and behold, they all join forces and or fight against each other to try to fortify this place and find the safest way of battling the walking dead. They find a TV, they get a radio, they listen, they find out that a space probe with radiation is causing the dead to come back for the life and start munching people, and then they get some conflicting reports, you know, stay where you are, no come look for help, that kind of thing. Story goes on, you lose a couple people to a fire in a car, long story, you'll get there. Anyway, that's a gist of the motion picture. It is what it is. I'm not going to tell you the ending just in case you haven't seen it. You're like the one or two people on planet Earth that hasn't gotten there. You'll find out for yourself. But, and I'll probably give it away in the summation, but I never like to finish off the exact story in the story. It's kind of silly to even ask this question of, does Night of the Living Dead work? Of course Night of the Living Dead works. It's one of the all-time great horror movies, and really one of the all-time great independent movies ever made. I mean, its legacy is almost unmatched, really. Let's get the big three out of the way. And when I talk about the big three, you know what I'm talking about, the directing, the writing, the acting. And when I say these things, you might say, well, how does this movie go on to be legendary? But we'll break it down. The directing. Well, it is what it is. It kind of looks amateurish. It kind of looks a bit unskilled. It's got some cool elements to it. There's some weird camera angles, some stuff going on. But when you watch this, you're never going to mix it up for a Spielberg production. It is what it is. But it works for this kind of a motion picture. We'll discuss that later. The writing. It's good enough. The story tells the story it's supposed to say. The characters say it's kind of necessary to get from one scene to the other. Again, this isn't Mark Twain, but it gets the point across. And for the kind of motion picture this is, which is just a low-down, dirty, low-budget little horror flick, you get by. And the acting. Hey, Dwayne Jones nails it. He's great in the role of Ben. Judith O'Day, 
She's pretty cool in the role of Barbara. And everybody else kind of flushes out their part. Even Carl Hardman isn't too bad as a perpetually fucking angry guy down in the basement. But let's keep in mind, these weren't really actors. Most of the people in this were not actors and never claimed to be actors. They were just people wrapped up in the production. This, let's go make a movie vibe. And that's what we're really going to talk about. Okay, let's get back on track. What makes this movie awesome? Well, it works on so many different levels. One, it has a perfect mood and a perfect vibe. This is a low, down, as I said before, dirty, grungy, little horror movie that pulls you in with its lack of sophistication. It pulls you in with its lack of dynamic cinema and dynamic sound. It is literally a motion picture that you kind of feel you're, you're almost watching a documentary loaded with a little bit of music over the top. That's kind of how you feel. Like you're, you, you almost feel like you're watching a, a missing film flick or something. Where It's one of those things where you're just in the corner watching this take place. It was never shot to be pretty. It was never shot to be beautiful. It was just shot to give you the story, to move from point A to point B, to scare the shit out of you in between and that is as simple as it gets. And let's talk about that. This movie from 1968, folks, was pretty damn scary. I mean, it was pretty damn horrific. No, it wasn't the first zombie, walking dead, whatever you want to call it, motion picture that was ever put to film, but it made an impact. It creeped people out. It scared the shit out of a lot of people. And even a couple little points in the movie has a little bit of dark humor that would make you chuckle, but it did what it set out to do. It frightened you. It captivated you. It put you in that mood. It put you in that setting. And you stayed in that setting for an hour and 35 minutes, and you never really broke out of it. And that was effective. That was spot on. And that was what you really want from any motion picture, top to bottom. One of the side note things that makes this movie awesome, too, is that you know when you watch it what they were trying to do. You get it. You understand that this movie was made for basically shit. I mean, it was like a hundred and something grand back in the 60s to put this together. And really, that just probably went mostly to film development and paying a whole bunch of extras and shit like that. Because it wasn't like they spent a lot of cash on this. I mean, it wasn't like the makeup department went apeshit crazy. It wasn't like they had any kind of real special effects other than a couple bullet shots going off under shirts. It was not that kind of movie. This was literally a motion picture made by a group of people who just it popped into their head, let's make a motion picture. They got the bare resources they could humanly throw together to make it, and they went and made it. At points, without really knowing where this thing was even going, they just said, hey, we got a concept, let's start filming. And that's what they did. Now, I'm not going to go super into detail about how this thing came to be. There's a great documentary, I'll put it in the description below. It was for the 40th anniversary of it, where they go into a lot of it. They break into a lot of the history and everything about the movie, which really is just as interesting as the movie itself. I'll give you a short of it. You know what I mean? You had George Romero and a bunch of college buddies. They formed a, a production company and started making television commercials. It was called The Latent Image. You know, they would make beer commercials and soap commercials for local stuff out of Pittsburgh, which is where this motion picture was made. Well, they teamed up with Carl Hardman and his associates, and they formed Image 10, because there was 10 of them all together. Pretty ingenious, huh? And the first thing they said is, let's make a movie. We can make a movie. You guys make commercials. We make commercials. You guys got some cameras. We got some cameras. Let's go start a flick. And that's what they did. And they only picked horror because it was a usually low investment, high return field. And they just dove into that because it was simple, it was cheap, and they thought they could make a few bucks off it. And in the end, let's face reality, they did make a few bucks off it. This thing went on to be very successful. And it went on to launch to launch an entire franchise of Living Dead movies. I think the original title was actually, you know, Night of Erebus or some shit like that. But it became Night of the Living Dead, became what it was, which spawned anything with the word Living Dead in it. You know what you're looking at, and you know the family that it belongs to. Now, are there problems with this motion picture? Of course there's problems. There's problems all over this motion picture. Actually, there's times when there's things in front of the camera and you can just see it in the corner of the screen. You're like, didn't anybody check the gate or wipe off the goddamn lens? Apparently not. There's points where there's like a lot of jump cuts where you're just like, this doesn't quite line up perfect, but it is what it is. There's times when the audio video aren't perfectly in sync with the sound effects. That's all I'm going to say there. 
There's all kinds of little things all over this motion picture, but that's one of the things that makes it great because it gives you this really rough, really low budget, really almost documentary style feel to it that makes it even more authentic than if it was really polished, than if it was really special, that it was if, if it was really with a cinematographer on there that lit everything just right. You don't get that here. And that's what makes it feel, look, and vibe even better than a lot of the shit that was done years later, over and over again. And really, even better than some of the stuff that George Romero went on to do later on. Because he could never quite capture that vibe again. He could never quite capture that feeling again. Listen, we all love the other movies too. Yes, but were any of them as down and gritty feeling as the original Night of the Living Dead? No, let's not fool ourselves. They were fun, they were entertaining, they were gory, but were any of them as scary? Were any of them as gritty? No, I don't think so. And one other thing about this motion picture too, I love the fact that the ending was not the ending you were thinking you were going to get. There was no Hollywood ending to this motion picture, which made it, again, even better. You didn't get the hero walking off into the sunset. You didn't get anybody sitting there and getting rescued by the good guys and moving on. This movie kind of ended on a downer note. It ended on a letdown, which made it even more perfect. And let's face reality. We're all behind the Ben character, basically. We're like, yeah, he's cool and Cooper's an asshole and everything like that. But really, as George Romero said, that character had to die because he was wrong. If you watch the movie, really, Cooper was right. He was an asshole and a dick. But the basement was the best place. Everybody who stayed upstairs with Ben, who was the guy you were kind of rooting for, God, look what happened to him. And he had to pay the price at the end with his character being, well, I just gave away the end of the movie. I should have just covered that in the story. Nah, fuck it. All in all, Night of the Living Dead has had such an impact, made such an imprint on all films that followed it. I mean, whether it was Assault on Precinct 13 by John Carpenter, or whether it was all the other zombie flicks and the Walking Amongst Us fucking movies, whatever it was, this motion picture set a feel, a vibe, a template that was borrowed from, lifted from, stolen from so many times throughout motion picture history pre nine or post-1968, I should say, that's almost ingrained in us. It's almost a part of everything we see. So if we see this now, it, it, if you've never seen it, it's not revolutionary. But this is where it began. And really, let's be honest, they stole half of their ideas from the original book of I Am Legend and some other things like that. So everybody borrows from somebody. But in motion picture history, Night of the Living Dead was the originator to a degree of this motion picture style, of this motion picture vibe, and it is never going away, and it will always be with us. And that wacky little pack of people made this. And don't, and even though I didn't mention him really in the in the in the acting credits, you know, Russell Schreiner was one of the producers of this flick, and he was all in with George Romero in making this motion picture. And yes, he played Johnny in the beginning of this thing. So again, it was just a group of people with an idea that made something that went on to be bigger than any of them could have ever humanly imagined and went on to create a legacy for them that none of them, none of them, could ever overshadow. All right, folks, there we are. Get out and watch this motion picture. Have a good time. I know just about everybody's seen it. I know I try to uncover movies that people might not have seen, but to the eight or nine people on the planet who haven't seen this motion picture, get out there, watch it, watch the original. Have yourself a good time. Appreciate what it is. Appreciate what it's done. Be good. Take care. Stay out of trouble. Be kind to a friend. Always help a stranger. But above all else, without any exception, never take any bullshit from anybody. See you soon.